With the NBA free agency approaching fast around the corner, we could see a shift of power in the NBA. Many top free agents are available this year making this, in my opinion, one of the greatest free agency classes of all time. Therefore, these are my predictions on where the top free agents in the NBA will go this summer. What's up YouTube, it's your boy SD Basketball back with another video. And if you like these types of videos, subscribe and like for more, it lets me know. And let's get into it. Chris Middleton and Malcolm Brogdon, that's who we're going to start with. I put these two guys together because I do not see a situation where either of them leave the Bucks. Let's start with Brogdon, he is a solid role player who plays good alongside Giannis. On top of that, he is a restricted free agent meaning the Bucks can match any offer thrown at him. Due to the success the Bucks had had this year and how close they were to making the finals like two games away, I see them ready to pay Brogdon the big bucks. Same situation with Middleton who made his first all-star game this season. They will both be primed to receive massive deals from teams that strike out on top free agents so they will get paid a good amount either way. However, the Bucks owner already announced he is willing to pay the luxury tax this offseason so I do not see a likely chance that either of them are going to be in another team's jersey next year. Next up, we have Julius Randle. With Zion on the Pelicans now, I do not see him returning. Randle and Zion play very similar styles making it hard to have both of them on the court at once. Neither are amazing shooters or have the height to play in the paint the whole game. Plus, after a great season by Randle, he is primed for a huge contract this offseason. With the Suns expressing interest and Randle also wanting to play there, I will not be surprised to see Julius playing alongside Booker and Aiden on the Suns next year. Now, next up, this player was unexpected, Al Horford. If I made a video a week ago, he would not be on this list. However, so much can change in the NBA in one week. With Horford declining his option for $30 million next year, he is entering free agency. He is looking for a 4 year deal and since the Celtics were only going to offer him 3 years, he decided to move on past them. He's expecting a 4 year $100 million deal which sounds like a tough deal for most GMs to part with, especially since he is already 33 years old and will be declining very soon. However, there have been reports that one team in the NBA is going to offer Horford a 4 year $112 million deal. The two teams chasing Horford are the Mavericks and Clippers. However, I think the Clippers will get another top free agent on a max deal, so they may not be willing to give Horford all that money, especially since they have Harrell on their team. As a result, I think Horford will end up on the Mavericks since the Mavericks need a big alongside Kristaps and he will definitely help the young team and make a run to go back in the playoffs. Now this next player is an interesting one. We have DeMarcus Cousins. This is interesting because at his peak, DeMarcus is an all-star caliber player, and two years ago, he was debated as the one of the best centers in the league. However, the Achilles tendon tear has cost him a lot of money. He had a lackluster finals, got hurt in the playoffs, and seemed to make the Warriors worse when he was on the court. That is not saying he's a bad player however. He had good moments throughout the season. He just needs a situation where he can regain his ability by getting touches and getting back in rhythm. I don't see Cousins getting signed early on either. After missing out on a lot of money last summer, I think he'll be more focused on the money rather than winning. I see him being in a situation on where he gets paid as a consolation prize for teams that strike out. In my opinion, I think the Knicks will be the destination he goes to. With not that much free agency attraction and the whole offseason plan is now hinged on Durant, I could see him throwing a massive deal to Cousins to try and salvage the offseason they were supposed to get Durant, Irving, and Zion. Next up, we have Klay Thompson. I don't think there's much debate here. He is a warrior for life and according to the Warriors, he will get a 5 year deal from them. He will get his money, time to recover from the ACL tear, and gets to continue his legacy as a splash brother with Steph. Unless the Warriors try and shortchange him and give him less than the max, which I highly doubt especially if they lose Kevin Durant, I think Clay will be staying in the bay. Now we have Kemba Walker. Kemba finally gets his opportunity to leave Charlotte and go to a winning organization. With the interest from Mavericks, Lakers, and Clippers, and now the Celtics, I see the possibility of him leaving. However, Kemba loves the Charlotte community. He wants to win with that team, which I doubt he can, but as he even stated, he is willing to take less than the max to stay. Kemba is eligible for a $210 million deal with, for 5 years which I see him taking since he is already 30 years old and he's not going to improve greatly after this so he might as well get his money when he's at his peak. Now we have Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic has had a great season making the all-star game for his first time ever. The Magic made the playoffs for the first time since Dwight left also. The Magic will be willing to match and outpay any team to keep Nikola whether that's the Celtics, Lakers, Mavericks, or Clippers. I think the Magic will give him his money and will be more than happy to come and build on what last season was because, once again, they have not been to the playoffs forever, so they're going to try and keep it. Now we have the bigger name players. We have Tobias Harris. He is another player who just had a good season. 
He is a solid scorer and the Sixers goal is to keep at least one of him or Butler and preferably both after what they gave up in their trades. Butler has a lot of doubt in the air so they'll focus on getting a deal with Harris early on since he enjoyed his time in Philly. He is due for a big payday so look for the Celtics to ink a big deal quickly with them to get him off the market before he gets outbidded by other teams. Now this is the next player where things get interesting. We have Jimmy Butler here. He has already stated that he wants his own team and wants a big payday. Look for Jimmy to go to a team that does not have a bona fide star on their roster. That fifth year by the Sixers is enticing him, but I think Jimmy will be able to make it up with endorsements in LA. I see Jimmy going to the Clippers, who have a solid team and are in need of a just a star player. They will get the attention of a star player and will play alongside players like Patrick Beverly, who will fit great alongside him and make a team play elite defense. He will get his four year max and head to the Clippers this offseason. Next up, we have Kyrie Irving. Kyrie has already said he is not interested in returning into Boston and will not even return their phone calls and he's currently ghosting them right now. He has been heavily linked to Brooklyn. He signed with Rock Nation, a Brooklyn based agency owned by Jay Z. He is from New York and his camp says he is headed there. I see the interest in LA also but you can tell he does not want to play under LeBron's shadow anymore as like the reason he left Cleveland to Boston the first time. As a result, I see him being a Brooklyn net next season. Next up is D'Angelo Russell and I felt like if I revealed this one you know, earlier it would ruin the Kyrie prediction. So let me talk about it now. Since they're gonna get Kyrie Irving, they will announce the rights on D'Angelo Russell. I do not see the Nets needing to keep both of them because both of them have the same skill set. They're both score first players and they really play all right defense and I really don't see them fitting alongside of each other. The Nets will also move alongside him because Irving, he can also bring another max free agent with them. So they might just try and get another big name player. So the other three teams interested in D'Angelo is the Lakers, Suns, and Timberwolves. Minnesota does not have the cap space necessary to get him and will have to do a lot of maneuvering to get a deal to sign him, which I do not see happening so I think they are out of the equation. Phoenix said they are not interested through the rumors from uh, people surrounding their camp, especially because they are trying to re-sign Kelly Oubre. However, they do need a point guard and D'Angelo is close with Devin Booker so also keep an eye out on them. The Lakers and Russell are also interested in one another, but the Lakers do not have max money so I don't know how that will work and they may be better off going supporting around cast around LeBron and AD. But out of all of them, I think the Lakers is the most likely one to happen because the only issue D'Angelo had with the Lakers was Magic Johnson and he's gone and maybe D'Angelo might be willing to take less than max money to go to the Lakers depending on how the interest in the market shakes out. Now we have Kawhi Leonard. This is a top free agent in my opinion this year. But for him, it's coming down to a two-team race, the Clippers and the Raptors. The city of Toronto loves him. He has a better supporting cast than he would in the Clippers, and they already won a ring and can offer him a five-year, and he can make more than $200 million a year, uh, in total in that deal. Even though I see Kawhi from like the SoCal, I see the connection there, and they also have a solid team, I think the city of Toronto has more to offer, and it's too much to turn down. Like, Look at that fan base. He's a legend already over there. As a result, I see Kawhi Leonard staying and resigning with the Toronto Raptors. Next we have Kevin Durant. His Achilles tendon tear threw a wrench in everything this offseason. Now I say the race has come down to three teams, Brooklyn Nets, Golden State, and the Knicks. Now Golden State has to resign everyone and to, in order to do that they will have a $350 million bill next year due to luxury tax and having the three maxes of Clay, Steph, and Durant if everyone does come back. As a result, I don't see him being a serious contender because the financially that's a really expensive deal and the highest payroll before that was the Cavs after they won the championship which is 170 million. On top of that there have been reports that Durant is mad at the organization for letting him play game I think 5 when he was hurt very badly. Thus it comes down to the Knicks and Brooklyn. Brooklyn will have Kyrie and allows Durant to set out a year and recover. He has met up with Irving twice to discuss teaming up and with Brooklyn having a better team and also two max spots I see him going to the Nets like the Knicks are kinda like a, a dumpster fire right now you know. He will be in New York either way, but be on a better team as a result. That's how I think the top free agents in this year's class are going to go to. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications when I post, and I'm out.